every trial, every tribulation, Satan is a failure. We're going to learn that one day. Somehow or another, some point in our life, anybody got a coconut head in here? Oh, there's a lot of y'all. Let me point my fingers. <laughs> Woo! But my God is still alive and well today. He's still alive and well. Children's Church is being dismissed. And go ahead and turn your way to the book of Mark this morning. It's been on me lately. It's been on me hot and heavy since the resurrection service we had. The resurrection power. We talked about it Wednesday night and had the show of glory of God in here way before we even got here. The showing of the glory of God is still in here today. He's still moving. He's still, in the, he's still in the number one position. He's still the winner. He's still in the lead. He'll never fall back. It don't matter how far back in the race me and you get. God's always leading the pack. God is always at the front of the line. God is always in the front of mine and your life. And today, where you are exposed... Where you are exposed to God, where you are exposed to the resurrection power and will have things to happen in my, in your life. And that's when, as a matter of fact, is when you get into the, uh, get exposed to the, where the resurrection power is at, there will be a lots, a lots of changes. Lots of changes. In the book of Matthew, I mean, book of Mark. In chapter 5, book of Mark in chapter 5, we'll start in verses 21 and read through verses 43. It's a little lengthy, but it ain't too much. It's still God's Word, and it's still powerful, and we still need to read it. And this scripture, you probably all know it by heart, and it's about a dead girl and a sick woman. And today in America, not just saying right here in CFI, but here in America today, we have got sickness going on. It's inside the church. It's inside the church family. It's in our, in our homes. It's in our family. It's in our friends. It's everywhere. And the only cure that I know to get you well is to get you exposed to where the power of the resurrection power of God Almighty is. I can carry you to the doctor. I love doctors and I love the doctor's medications because I have to take medications daily. I'm not down them and not, not, not casting away them none whatsoever. We have to have those and God's given those ability to the man and womankind to come and look at the body and help the body and God has given the mankind the ability to help and develop a medication but I want to tell you if you want truly resurrected, if you want a truly healing in your life, if you want the true meaning of the power of the resurrection in your life, then we got to get exposed and the only way that I know how to do that, church. I can't carry you to a doctor and get this to happen. I can't carry you to the bank and take out a loan and give you all the money to make this happen. I can't go and buy all the medications to you. I can't go to a palm reader, but I know that I can go to the Word of God and I can give you the Word of God and expose you to the Word of God. And then that resurrection power will come and do for you what you need in your life, church. Man. Man, oh man. And you see, I just didn't figure this out. It was figured out many, many years ago. And it said that in verse 21, when Jesus had, when Jesus had been uh, again crossed over by the boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. And today, church, we are that large crowd. Today, that's me and you. We have heard that Jesus has come to town. We have heard that Jesus crossed crossed over that other side. Anybody this morning want to get in the presence of where Jesus Christ is at? Oh, I'm getting worried. Anybody want me to give you a million dollars this morning? There's more excitement for that than they are to get in the presence of where Jesus is at. But today, I want us to look, and he crossed over to the other side. Jesus has got in the church today. He came inside this building today. He is right here. Jesus is here today, church. He's right in your presence. And, and after he got there, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus, 
came there, seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter, oh, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. And when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, I, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt and she felt in her body that, that she was freed from her suffering church. And she felt not only in the body of Jesus, but she felt in her body that she was healed church and, and because she got in the presence of where God was at somebody needs to get into the presence of where God is this morning and the moment that you get there and God touches you church you'll feel in your body that the glory and the resurrection power of God has came on you Lord how mercy <laughs> Woo, man at once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? Now, I want to ask you a question right now. When's the last time that God felt you touch him? When's the last time that Jesus truly felt the power leave out of him, not because of your neighbor, not because of the one on this side, but because of you? When is the last time that you felt the power of God in you, but when is the last time that God felt the power leave his son, Jesus Christ, because of you touching him? I know that's tough. I know that's hard. You see, the people crowded against his disciples answered, yet yeah, you can ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. And while Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Oh, Jairus, listen, Jairus. Oh, Jairus. Oh, Jairus, your daughter is dead. They said, why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And when they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and he said to her, Talitha, come, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately. Immediately the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. At this, at this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know what this about this and told them to give her something to eat. Father, your word has been spoken. Your word has been read. Now, Father, let this word, let the understanding... Let the resurrection power that raised a dead girl to life and let the resurrection power that took the issue of blood in the woman for 12 years be a resurrection power and raise our spirits today and raise our sickness today and raise our deadness today in the name of Jesus. And anybody claim that victory, say amen with me this morning. Lord, church, don't you know that if you get exposed... When you get exposed to something, a lot of things can happen in mind in your life. If you go and hang out and expose yourself to a hog pen, you're going to come back smelling like roses, I know. Amen? You're going to come back smelling like a hog. 
You go and expose yourself to a bucket of grease or a greasy tractor or whatever and you get your hands in it, then you're going to come back greasy, church. You can go in, and, and there's different restaurants you can go to. I, I dear about can tell you after you leave from lunch at what restaurants you went and eat at because I can smell that smell of food that whatever that restaurant cooks. If it's fried chicken, I'm probably going to smell like it too. But you know, if you go to one restaurant, you come out smelling. It's all about what you expose yourself to. You can go to different restaurants and get exposed to the, to the taste of food there. And it comes off and you carry it with you, church. Just like if you go into the hog pen, you're going to come out smelling like a hog. You carry it with you, church. But if you'll come to the feet of Jesus like this lady did and get exposed to the Holy Ghost and let the resurrection power of God come off on your life, you're going to walk away and and you're going to carry it with you, church, wherever you go and whatever you do. See, we need to get, we, we, we've been afraid of the Holy Spirit. We've been afraid of changes in our life. We haven't become to the, the people today that to let our pride be put aside and let the glory of God take over because there's a change in mind in your life when you get exposed to where the glory of God's at. When the resurrection power comes off on you, you, you will do things that you normally wouldn't do. You will act in ways you normally wouldn't act and you'll, you'll say things that you normally normally wouldn't say but church today we need some people inside the church to get excited about God and want to crawl up to where the glory of God is at and let him get exposed in the mind in your life I get excited about this because I saw where there was a man that was so desperate he had come to a spot in his life that everybody used to bring their problems to him because he was the he was the ruler in the center he was the man that was in charge. He dealt with issues of people coming. But, but he had something in his own household. He had something in his own closet. He had something in his own family that he was not able to do. Anybody here this morning got a problem that you've dealt with and you've tried to help it and take care of it yourself, but it just did not seem to work. I know I've been there myself, church. I've been right there myself. Lord, have mercy. He says, I've heard about a man, Jesus. I've heard about him. I, I, I've heard people say that, that he healed the blind. I heard people say that, that he took care of people's problems. But my daughter's sick. Oh, every doctor's been around. Looked at her and ain't nothing they could do. They've done this, they've done that. I've been everywhere I could go, but nothing's happened. And, but I heard about Jesus. And he goes and he finds Jesus. He takes the initiative himself to walk out of his situation and leave his de the daughter that was dying back at the house to go seek help. Church, hey, you know what? You may be in the spot of your life this morning that you don't feel like going after nothing. That you, you know, it's done happen. Uh, I'll just take what's given. Uh, you know, I'm going before you. I'm going right now. Say, God, anybody in here has got an issue. God, Almighty, right now, I come. Come and I bow at your feet and say, God, you help them in their problem. You help them in their situation. You give them what they need this morning, Lord God. The whole time he was bowed at the feet of Jesus. You know, when it comes home to you, it's real serious. And you want all the attention in the world. But here it was that this other problem arose. It was a woman... It was a woman that had an issue of blood, and she'd done been to every doctor. She'd done took every medication. She'd done eat every leaf of every tree that was ever uh, put on earth. She had did this remedy, that remedy. She'd done that. She'd done this. She did everything. She spent everything she had. We know that story. She comes right into interruption when, when Jesus is trying to help one or about to help one, when there's somebody tugging on him and saying, come help me, Jesus, and then all of a sudden... But you see, this woman was desperate. She was really, 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 really desperate. She was so desperate. She was so desperate. This woman, this woman that came with the issue of blood, 
and something that she had to do. And there was something that the man Jairus had to do before he went as well. And I know this is so hard. This is really and truly hard. It's hard for mankind. You don't like to humble yourself. We just, we, not you, we don't like to humble ourselves. We don't like to humble ourselves into, you know, because especially the men, hey, I'm a man. I'm a man. I can handle this. I got this. Women the same way too. Yeah, I can. I can handle this. I got this. But you see, until they humble themselves, until they humble themselves, they, they brought themselves down where they were. And Jairus was up here because he was a synagogue ruler. He was, he was up here, church. He was up here. But he had to bring himself down here. And he had to depend and believe and to trust in the name of Jesus Christ. And he got to that spot and he went there. And he humbled himself. And I tell you this morning, until we humble ourselves, you're not going to get your healing. You're not going to get what God's coming to you unless you humble yourself. And I can tell you this, unless you humble yourself, you're not getting the attention of Jesus. You're not going to get the attention of Jesus until you humble yourself. In the book of Matthew in 13, 14, and 15, it says, In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. You see, until you get this calloused heart broken down, until you get this calloused heart just softened up and, and come and fall at the feet of Jesus, until you, you say, I, I can't do this on my own, until you say, I, there's no way that I can do this, God. i got to have some help. i got to have you. i got to have you to help me. Until we humble ourselves, God's willing to heal us just like he said. This prophecy is still going on today. There is many people, they're hearing the word of God, but they're not understanding the word of God. There's a a lot of people today that is seeing the healings of God but their eyes is not perceiving and saying yes that's exactly what that is they're making excuses about that but today the only way I know to get you healed and to get you help is to expose you to the word of God and what God says church get into the presence get to where they is oh Lord have mercy church you can't go and buy this at Walmart I mean, Walmart's powerful and Walmart's good, and I. Let's end with that. <laughs> but where I want to expose you, I can expose you to great foods steaks and shrimps and caviars and ham sandwiches, mater sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and banana. Oh, you got to put mayonnaise on all of that. <laughs> I can fill you up. I can feed you. Don't none of y'all show up at my house for dinner. <laughs> I, 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 can, I, I, can, I can fix you the sweetest tea, putting 12 cups of sugar in one gallon and make it sweet. I can buy you soft drinks. I can buy you water. I can do all this stuff at church. None of that is going to do you the good of being exposed to the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, church. None of it is going to be anything. You know, it's going to have any power. There ain't but one power, and that's God Almighty Himself. That is the God that's in heaven, the God of glory that sends down the same resurrection power that came off that cross, church. Arise in you today. It'll rise in you today. It'll rise in you today, church. That same resurrection power. But there's hard hearts. There's hard hearts. There's some that just won't take it. There's some that, that'll just walk away from it. There's some that'll be exposed to it. And it'll be like they got on their shield. They got on their bulletproof vest. It ain't penetrating here. It ain't penetrating here because I don't want to change. I, I want to be who I am. I'm going to stay who I am. Well, I can tell you, if there ain't no change, you're headed for the pits of hell. 
You got to change. You got to humble yourself and get exposed. And I don't want nobody. I want everybody to go to the kingdom of God. I don't want nobody. Not even the worst, 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 worst. I don't have any enemies. They might be enemies, but I don't have any. I don't have any enemies. I love everybody. Cuss me out, spit in my face. We still going to love one another. Jesus was spit upon. Jesus had all kind of crazy things happen to him. But you know what? He was just like. Jesus was just like the attitudes of this sick woman with an issue of blood for 12 years in, in, in this synagogue rule of Jairus. They, 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 their same characteristics were shown here. You know what? Jesus, he was desperate. Uh, he was willing. He was humbled. He was needing. And he was seeking just like this lady would issue a bud. You know what? She didn't get her healing because she, called, she, she was desperate and she was willing and she was humble and she was needing and she sought after hers. Jairus did the same thing for his daughter. His daughter wasn't able to go, but Jairus went on her behalf. I go before you today. I go on your behalf today and say, Jesus, if they're not willing to come on their own, I stand the gap for them. I stand the gap for him. He called me to be a servant. He called me to be a disciple. He called you to be servants. He called you to be disciples. He called you to get exposed to the holy power and resurrection power and let the fire start in you and you carry and spread that wildfire. Spread that wildfire everywhere. Lord, how mercy, church, spread it. The healing that came, it came because they humbled themselves. It come because they was willing to bow. It come because they was willing to confess that they was not able to do it on their own. They come because they knew that they had no other way. There was no other option. They, everything had done. She had done depleted all her money. She depleted every contact she had. And Jairus had did everything that he could. He called in every priest. He called in every prayer warrior to come. And there was nothing. But he says, I'm not going to stop here. I'm not going to give up here. The lady says, I'm not going to let the crowd stand in my way. You know what? You know what? If you don't want your blessing, just, just move by. If you feel something crawling up between your feet, you get out of the way because here I come. If, I, if you don't want to get there, I'm going to get there for you. I'm going to go. I'm going to get there. I, I, you know, I, I, oh Lord, how mercy, church. I, I want to be exposed to where the resurrection power, the resurrection power. Church, do you know that there's a resurrection power still alive today? There is still a people today that is still ready to seek God. You, do y'all believe that? How many would want true, 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 true revival? How many want a reviving? How many really want a reviving in your life? Well, I want to tell you, there's a revival going on. And it ain't but just a few miles from here. Matter of fact, it's in Omega, Georgia. That's just the other side of Tifton, if you don't know. 30 minutes, 45 minutes to get there from here. They're in their eighth week of revival. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Is anybody willing to come here for eight weeks straight right now for reviving in your life? Anybody willing to come and do that? Anybody? What, what, Lord, how much? You know what? I'm going to tell you, you can't do it on your own. There is no way that you can physically stand to come eight weeks, physically of your body, every night for eight weeks. But I can tell you what, if you'll get exposed to where the resurrection power that brought Jesus off that cross and rose him from that grave, I tell you, you, you won't have just enough power. You'll have more than enough power to want to come and be. Lord, have mercy, church. My goodness. There's healings that's going on today. There's people that's got deaf ears that's still being able to hear again. There's people that's blind that can see again. There's dead people just like this girl that, that, is, that is brought back to life again. Church, it's right here, right here in our community. It's right in our homes, in our churches, right here. But you know, church, we got to get the fire going. We got to get resurrected today, church.
Y'all remember the definition to bring back to use? Resurrection to bring back to use. To bring back from the dead. We got dead spirits. We got dead spirits. We we got cold spirits. We got hard spirits. Not just right here in this church, but they's in this church. They's in the church down the road. They's in the church down that road and that road and that road. Everywhere. You got dead spirited Christians. The people that has professed that I love Jesus Christ. And they won't have a move in their life for nothing in the world. I, Lord, have mercy. I want a fire to start. I want a fire to start. Right here, church. Lord, when is the last time? When is the, when, copy y'all come on, I'm going to pass out. When is the last time that you really and truly, I'm just as serious as I can be, you ask yourself this question. When is the last time that you felt the move of God in your life? Well, I can tell you for sure, exactly right now. You listen, if I've ever told you the truth, I'm telling it to you now. If you have not felt the move of God in your life, you listen, I'm telling you now, it is not God's fault. It is not God's fault. Somebody give praise to God for that because it ain't His fault. Oh, church, don't you blame it on God. Don't you blame it on the preacher. Don't you blame it on the pastor's committee. Don't you blame it on nobody except walk in front of that mirror and look who to blame it on. Because you know what? If the, if the pastor's not with you, you still got the Word of God. And by reading the Word of God, you can be in His presence. If the pastor's committee's not with you, you still got the Word of God. Don't you blame it on nobody except yourself and say, God, I want to repent. God, I want the glory of God back in my life. I want you to help me. I want to be exposed to you. I want to, like you go to to the hog pen and you get a hog all over you. I want to come to the church house and get the Holy Ghost on me. I want the Holy Ghost on me. I want the Holy Ghost on me that when I leave here and when other people see me, they say, Lord, you smell like the Spirit of God. Lord, you smell like the Spirit of God. Lord, you look like you done been in the presence of where God is at. Oh, gracious church. Gracious, gracious, gracious. Won't you get exposed to him? When you get exposed to him, your healing will come. Your healing would happen. When you get exposed to him, your deadness will come to life. When you get exposed to him, Things change. Things really, really, really change. But for you to get that change, for you to really and truly get that change, as you start standing to your feet, you have to humble yourself. For you to get that change and for you to get in that presence you got to do exactly like Jairus you got to put other things aside and you got to crawl your way to the feet of Jesus maybe I ain't got enough help maybe I ain't got enough strength maybe I'm still embarrassed maybe I'm st- I-, I-, I don't know maybe I, I- Maybe you, just like Jairus, I mean, his daughter, she was young. She wasn't able to go. She wasn't able to make that travel. Is there somebody that you can go stand the gap for? Is there somebody that you know that you could help? Every head bow, every eye closed. that lady touched Jesus' garment I want you to picture this while you got your eyes closed I want you to picture this I want you to picture this lady crawling on the ground to get up to where Jesus is at and you see when she gets there she's already 
seen Jairus bowed at his feet. She's already seen Jairus down in, on, on his feet just begging Jesus, just come to my house. I, I got a need. There's, there's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people all around. But I want you to picture her reaching out and touching his garment, touching his cloak. I want you to picture her reaching out and touching. Now the next thing I want you to picture, as soon as she touched, I want you to picture her as her blood as she was gone just like that. She was immediately felt a difference in her body. And then the other picture is, is Jesus turning around and looking. Somebody touched me. But I, but I want you to picture, you see all those other people, and there was thousands of people there. But it was not hard for Jesus to pick out who it was that touched her, touched him. Because see, there was something different about her than all the other people she had touched Jesus, but, but, the, but, but her body was changed immediately in the blink of an eye and the click of a finger. So Jesus looks around, and it's obvious. He sees her. She has to walk right up to him at that point. You see, she had gotten off her knees from begging him to go and up and profess and, and claiming victory. Yes, Lord, it was me. I, I did it. I did it. I'm guilty. The reason I did it was because I, I had a need. The reason I did it was because I, I've been sick a long time and, and I, I, I just wanted, I wanted my healing and I didn't know where else to go. I've done, done everything I could, Lord. There wasn't but one other option and that was to come and bother you. He said, woman, because of your faith, because of your faith, you are healed you got that faith this morning you got that faith this morning see Jerry still still didn't let that all interfere with him he's still on his, his knees begging and Jesus they come and run him and telling him some of his friends hey leave a teacher alone your daughter's dead now you see he should have come a while ago Lazarus was in the grave four days but Jesus was never late he said don't listen to them Hey, Jairus, don't listen to them. Just believe. All you got to do is believe, Jairus. This morning, will you believe? You need anointing of the Holy Spirit in your life today. You start stepping out and walk to this altar and meet me right now. You need the anointing of the Spirit of God in your life. You walk out right now and come get the anointing that God's got promised. Not to nobody else, but to you. Step out. Come in the presence of God right now. It's your anointing. God wants you.